Yes, people, welcome back to another episode of the Practice Makes Podcast. Look at this guy, look at the smile. <laughs> you know what time it is, bro. I've got my guy, Josh. Josh is drum class, Josh Crawford in the building. How are you doing, my bro? Doing good, man. Doing good. Thanks for having me on the podcast, man. Bro, I, I appreciate you, man. Me and Josh was literally just talking like five minutes before we went live. And this is like, this is a first. This is the first time that, um, you know, we're able to get together. And Josh is doing an a interview slash pod for the <laughs> first time. So we're making history. 15 hour, the 15 hours, like time difference? And time difference. So I am currently in Malaysia, in Kuala Lumpur. I'm on tour. As you guys can see, I'm in my hotel room. I'm just trying to make the best of the situation. It's my day off and I'm trying to work, man. You know, I'm just trying to make myself productive. And these are some of the things that I try to do when I'm on tour, you know. Is that the shower behind you? That's the shower behind me, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even want to show you the rest of the room because it's all messy. I've got my clothes all over the place. Okay. <laughs> 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 so where are you at at the moment? Are you in your studio? Yeah, this is where. Shoot, this is this is this is my bedroom, bro. <laughs> okay, this is this is where all the recordings, all the drum covers, all the reactions has been in this room. It's okay, 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 yep. amazing. Yep. So, like I was just explaining to Josh before we went on, and I explained to people at the start of this at, of this pod every time. This is the Practice Mates podcast. And for me, it's just about getting interesting people on here and asking them about their experiences and their careers and, you know, what makes them what makes them tick, what makes them successful, and just, just understanding their way of thinking. There's so many different ways of getting into the industry, um, you know, as a musician, but in any industry, it doesn't matter what you do. There's so many different approaches to life and everybody has a different journey. And I've been following Josh for a very long time and I'm sure a lot of you guys, uh, drummers especially, but musicians in general, I'm sure a lot of you guys um, know who this man is and has seen his work. Some of his videos are hilarious. Like <laughs> super, super, super funny. But do you know what, bro? And I, I, I like to give people their flowers whilst whilst they're here and especially whilst they're on this channel. I really admire your journey and your come up. And I think you have shown, especially me, like just another way of entering this music industry and being able to make money and being successful and whatever it is that your end goal is. I really appreciate just the journey. And I've you know, been watching your videos for a number of years now. And mm -hmm. I think it's great. And I like to start at like the very beginning before you even jumped in front of a computer or a mic or anything like that. Like just Josh, the person, what is your kind of like your upbringing? Um, where are you from? You know, and I just want to kind of know that the, the journey maybe from just up until you was about a teenager until you reckon you started figuring out what it is that you wanted to do. So talk to me, bro. Okay. Let's, let's, <laughs> let's, 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 let's go deep. Pause. Yeah, pause already. <laughs> oh, okay. Y'all. Okay. Uh, talk to me. All right. So we can start with where I'm from. This is yeah. Okay. So it's born in Georgia. It's born in Georgia. Okay. Stayed in Georgia till I was around five years old. Then we moved to, oh, oh yeah, wait, do you even know this? Born triplet. I'm a triplet. Yeah, I was, oh, yeah, you can't miss that bit out because I, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> this I is some... important information. There's one of three. Are you, yeah. So, what, where are you in the order? I'm the oldest. Okay, oh, dope, oldest. dope, dope, dope. But okay. yeah, yeah I, I'm the oldest. And um, like so, born triplet in Georgia, five years, moved to Illinois, where I'm currently at, for about another five years. Then yeah. we moved to New York for maybe 10 years, then moved to New Jersey 
for another mm. I spent I spent let's see I spent seventh grade all the way finishing high school in New Jersey. After New Jersey, came back to Illinois. That's where we had. That's the whole. Yeah, just been all over yeah. the place. So, um, and, yep. And there's sorry, there's always going to be bits where I like jump. Oh yeah, that's fine. Just, that's fine. That's fine. I find, that's fine. I find it all interesting and stuff. Like in terms of you, you're kind of moving. You're moving about, and so I'm guessing you come from a like a big immediate family. There's already three of you from the. Is it just like? You three brothers, and I got one sister. She's she's okay. six years younger than us. Okay, I, cool. I, that's that's the immediate family. It, yeah, got a bunch of cousins, but they're in different areas. Hence, moving back and forth and stuff. And my dad, uh, who also is a musician, he was mm-hmm. a he was a jazz clarinetist. Can I say that right? Cool. A clarinetist. I'm and, so um, glad. <laughs> <laughs> so um. <laughs> Yeah, so we got a music background from him, but he also had one of the coolest jobs in the world. He was a travel agent for uh, New York, and he pretty oh, much cool. this man got to test out suites for celebrities to let them know if it's something they should be interested in. So yeah, that's sick. Yeah, yeah. That's sick. <laughs> we gig him. He he's in. Suite. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's living. Pops is living good, boy. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> man. Amazing, so, amazing, amazing. Um, and when did it start kind of like musically? Like, I mean, obviously, like you you play drums. Um, when did that kind of start for you? Was that like from an early age? So, okay, so this this is connected to a testimony. So the, okay. you, about, you about to get some exclusive stuff. I haven't released this yet on my channel. I've been doing this for years. Just haven't made the video for it yet. But um, so when we when we me and my brothers were born, something went wrong where like they couldn't stop me from crying. So apparently I cried so like so intense that I popped a blood vessel in my brain, which which caused me to literally pass away. And they, they were able to like bring me back. And literally a week later, happened again. My my dad was driving. They were on their way to a church service. And uh, according to my dad, like, they said I stopped breathing. They went and checked. So I, I was out. He said I was turning blue. And, like, uh, yeah, my dad got to praying. And, all, and long story short, straight miracle happened. I I came back and my dad was satisfied, but my mom, she was like, no, no, we got to check him at a hospital. We got to check this out. So I took him to the hospital. They saw that prior when, when my blood blood vessel popped, when I was born, they did a surgery, they put in a shunt and stuff like that, that it's, it's the term. Yeah. So when we went to this doctor a week later, the doctor like examined me and stuff and went back to my dad and was like, why, why does he have that shot in his head? And then they explained what happened. He was like, well, that's weird because it looked like he never needed it. It's not even working. So like, and they said they can't like remove it because it actually became a part of his body. So that also concerned the, um, the doctor where he was like, you know, he could end up being like a waterhead baby or he's he's going to be very slow. He's not going to be able to like retain anything or learn certain things. Mm-hmm. And they 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 used to do all these type of tests. Fast forward, I'm like seven and I'm getting into different schools and stuff. They still running tests on me. And mm-hmm. I went to uh, music school in, at summer drums wasn't even my first instrument i right. played i started playing the trumpet oh. and uh me and my brothers like we was do, like all of us did different horn sections and we actually was in an orchestra in fifth grade and uh <laughs> i got 
fired because I forgot my mouthpiece at rehearsal. She fired me immediately. You got fired in the fifth in the fifth grade. Fifth grade. She fired me immediately. <laughs> I was like, you know, I don't even want this anyway. I was, and then, <laughs> uh, then I went to a church in New York where I met cousins I never met before, and one of them was okay. playing drums. And I was that was like the first time I got like hooked to drums. I'm like, yeah, what? Did, what? Did? And he was just yeah. he was killing and all this stuff. And I was yeah. like, you know what? I want to play drums. So my dad set me up to go to this this uh, summer program for music for drums. But the, my doctor was like, yo, no, he's not gonna be able to, nah. And then they're like, well, we gotta give him, right. we gotta give him a shot. Got yeah. it. Saw that I picked up the drums just like that. So they was like, was that coming from like, um, we're not sure if you'd be able to like retain. Just yeah, learning, because, right, because right, right. What happened mentally, but uh, yeah, 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 yep, got hundred percent got it. Doing, yeah, literally. Wow, that's amazing, bro. Yep, that's amazing, man. Music does that though, like especially something like the drums. I mean, like drums is one of those instruments that just people are attracted to because it's yeah. because it's loud as well. That, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, so you see it straight away, and like I remember, like for me playing drums. I started playing drums at three years old, and then I've got like a whole. Hold up! Hold up! Hold up! <laughs> hold up! We gotta dive into that. Pause. We yeah, we gotta go. Yeah, three. yeah. You said three. So I started playing at, at 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 three. I could just I could just play, like, but on like those kind of like I I could make sense of rhythm if that makes sense. So if a song's at three, you know, yeah, if a song's you know, just playing. I'm already in time and I'm, and I'm trying to just replicate what happens. But fast forward, I, I've got like a whole kind of like gray area of my life between three and maybe like 10, 11, where I just don't even really remember anything. Yeah. And then I remember um, seeing a drum kit that I remember my mum started to go to church like kind of late on when I was maybe about 10 or something like that, which is kind of late if you didn't grow up in church, you know, if you know where I'm coming from. So, um, and then I remember seeing this guy playing the drums at my church and I was just like, I can do that. I just, I just knew that, you know, foot on the bass drum. I looked at it and I was like, okay, that makes sense. Hi hat makes sense. Left hand, right hand. It just made sense to me. So I, I kind of relate in a sense where like you see something and it just clicks straight away. Yeah. And normally, you know, if you're trying to teach somebody the drums, you're like, put your right foot here. You know, like Bro. it's it's a it's quite a complicated thing to teach people Bro. how to do. I know? just got I just got done teaching my sister's friends how to play the drums. I was teaching right. them a very simple beat. And yeah, to yeah, feed yeah. them, I'm like, wait, they're no. It's easy yeah. to me. Why can't you get this? But yeah, no. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, it's not easy. It's not easy. So for those people who kind of like just click, where it just clicks, like I just looked at it long before, like, you know, maybe I remember just going to church for weeks, months, and I was just like, this looks easy. Like it just, it looks easy. And I remember like the first time I sat behind like a big kit and I was I just knew what to do. Do you mm -hmm. know what I mean? So, like, yep. there's definitely a thing, you know, especially when it comes to drumming, but just connecting to music. You, you remember the time, like that, that the, the like the time. Yeah, they were like, "Hey, you yeah, get them on the drums real quick." The first time, and it, and it's weird because, like, I think prior to that, I could because of like when I was free, I just kind of understood rhythm. Mm -hmm. So, like, I remember, like. um, my mum, like, if, whenever we'd eat Chinese, I'd keep the chopsticks. And then, hey man, why you know is that goes, a thing? You know oh, how it goes with the chopsticks. That's, 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 uh, that's your early five A's, bro. That's your early, you know what I mean? So I'd keep the chopsticks, and I didn't have a kit in the house, but I'd be playing on, like, you know, the shoe boxes or, you know, whatever it, whatever it is. So I already kind of knew, you know, like, just what to do. I'm left-handed as well. So I play open-handed. Uh -huh. So, but I would always like play like this. So like my left hand would be doing the hi-hat 
on on the shoebox. You know, it just all made sense to me. And then there was one time where I played drums for the first time. I was begging my Sunday school teacher to like, yo, please, like, can I play? Like, my Sunday school class, we was having like a promotion Sunday where, you know, like you get you move up to the next year. And then my class, like the choir had to sing. And I was just like, I don't want to be in a choir. I want to play. Like, let mm-hmm. me just play for the choir. She's like, all right, cool. I was begging her, like, let me play, let me play. And I just jumped on the kit, bro. Like, and I just played straight away. And I remember it was just like, <laughs> and I could just do it, bro. And that, it's weird, but it just came naturally, you know? Bro. So how old was you when you started figuring out, like, I'm good at this, like, I, 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 I want to do this? Like, what's that process like for you? So um, I believe I was 10. And this is when, yeah. like, I was at the same church where I saw, by the way, real quick. Yeah, yeah. Let me see if you know, if you remember. When you first saw that drum set, you remember the color? Yep. Orange pearl. Bro. Okay, mine was blue. It was a blue Yamaha. Sticks with you, man. So it sticks with you, bro. My cousin was the drummer. For some reason, they they family was always late. They had they had to make an entrance. He'll come yeah, super yeah. late during the song, get on a high head and kick, and everybody go yeah. crazy. So yeah. one time after church, they were playing like a decent song, and I got on. I knew the hits, yeah. and that's what caught them. My cousin yeah. came. I know he's like, bro. You playing next Sunday, bro? <laughs> like, oh snap! It's happening. So yeah. yeah, that's that's where it started with that one. So, in um, what area? What area was you in at this point? That was where was uh, you? New New York, Long Island, New York, New York. So talk to me because this this is like fascinating, you know, to me and especially like a lot of the guys. Um, who are not necessarily from America, but I like to have this conversation because you get it all over the world, but like a particular sound comes from a particular area. So you have like guys from New York who sound a certain way. You have guys Mm -hmm. from London who sound a certain way. You have guys from Philly, LA, Chicago. They all have like a certain sound. Mm -hmm. Was there like, was there like a sound that like, you know, you just kept on hearing with it. Who were the drummers that you was watching that were like from your local area that, you know, everybody was trying to to sound like? I'll tell you. So in New York, it was just my cousin at the time. And that's where I found out when it's when you, in church with the shouting music in New Ooh. York, it's about like 250 B- BPL. Yeah, that it's, is, it's dumb fast. So yeah, like yeah, yeah. that's that's what stood out to me when it came to New York. Like they shout extremely fast. Yeah. Moving towards New Jersey, I was in Newark, New Jersey. I can tell you without a shadow of a doubt. Everybody wanted to play like Spanky. That's yeah. everybody in Newark. Everybody yeah. wanted that sound. That's yeah. shout like, out to like, Spanky, man. Shout out to Spanky, man. Like yeah. everybody, like it's it's videos to this day on YouTube where I'm drum soloing and I'm trying to do what Spanky does, but I had no yeah. understanding of timing, so yeah. all of it fails. Yeah. But it, 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 <laughs> I thought I was Spanky, <laughs> like for real. Bro, I remember when that phase, when that like when that phase hit London, and it's it's really interesting, you know, because. Like we we would get things obviously like a little bit later than you guys, but when everybody kind of started listening to Tyre and you know, and then obviously started finding out about Spanky, everybody's like trying to change the way that they played. And there's some like so much influential drummers, but a lot of it, you know, from my perspective, I'm like, okay, cool, like that's how they sound from that area, or that's how they sound from from New York. Like it, it, they've all got like different things going on. Um. This is really interesting. So talk to me about like, you know, your your kind of your playing and that transition into adulthood. Because I think your way of getting into the industry is like is so is so interesting. 
um, like talk to me kind of about like your adolescent years and like getting a job and that kind of thing, but still wanting to play drums. What was that like for you? Uh, so the back, back when I was in high school, the only job like nine to five, I actually had got, I used to cut hair at a barber shop. Oh, dope. You're a barber. Yeah. Yeah, I I haven't upgraded with the tools. That's like okay, okay, okay. I, I, have, I have no color enhancement techniques, none of that. <laughs> I'm so old school with that. But uh, yeah, you gonna get a line though. You gonna get a crisp line, dope. That's fading. all right, man. That's all. That's all that's needed, bro. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. So I was working at a barber shop, and then, bro, they fired me, bro. Oh, they, they fired me. One of one of the barbers was getting mad because one sun one Saturday, this, this okay this this African he had dark red hair, he came mm. he sat in my chair and he wanted a Beijing blackout. You know what Beijing is? Nah, what's that? So Beijing is is before the color enhancement spray. It's right. it's literally a chemical you mix. Right. I've never done that before, and then like. I'm shaking in my chair, like, and then one of the barbers was like, "Yo, you you know what you do? Just get the thing." I had to go to the store, had to pick yeah. it up, add water, and then just he like, it's like you painting, bro. When I tell you, I hooked him up. More people just start getting in my chair, and that was right, a right, right. haircut at that time, back in two thousand five. Yeah, and you know some of the barbers got jealous, and then they told the manager that I was like skipping out on my rent for the chair. Right. Fired me on the spot. I I oh, couldn't even man. I didn't even have a chance to explain myself. But that's fine. Yeah. So when after that it was in high school where I met was it me. So my brother was playing keys, my other brother was playing mm -hmm. guitar and he sings. So mm -hmm. we met another uh person named Alex Raspberry. Shout out to Alex Raspberry bass mm -hmm. player moved from arts high school to our high school and then we we locked in we we, we went to a church one day found out he killing on bass We're like you know what yo we need to do it we need to make a jazz band made a jazz band what's unique about our jazz band is we don't rehearse <laughs> bro right, we, just, right. we literally improv every gig that's jazz so, man there's no rules and our our band actually ended up replacing our high school drum line. That and then we got oh, paid cool. for that. Like we like they start we started we played at every high school in New Jersey. Every yeah. event we played for the mayor and all this stuff. That, so that we started gigging literally from that. And that yeah. that became our job in New Jersey. And yeah. That's yep. Yeah. Amazing, bro. So and I want to get to like this I want to get to this phase because I, I can see something in the background and I know what it is. <laughs> I, can see, I can see something in the background. Yeah. Yeah. I can. Right. Okay. Let's that's move a, to that. That's a, that's, a light, that's a light flex that you got, but I like it, bro. I like it. Bro, <laughs> We're going to get to that. No, because th this bit is, is fascinating. And this is where I say to music, I get a lot of questions of musicians of like, just how do I get in? Mm -hmm. How do I get on? How do I get a gig? And I'm, there is no right or wrong answer. And there's no right or wrong way to make your way into the industry. But I want to know if there was like a point before you started kind of jumping on YouTube and started to make content, yeah? Was there a point for you where you really wanted to, to gig? And you started gigging and you either stopped or did you not start gigging and just jump straight into content? Like what is the the kind of the, just the, the the inception of you thinking, mm, I want to jump on YouTube and start and start doing things? And where did where did where did that come from? What's the very first moment, if you remember? Um, let's see. I definitely remember the the very first video that I uploaded on YouTube and it was I was doing drum lessons and I uploaded a uh I uploaded a 15 minute 
out of control drum solo where I'm trying yeah. to be spanky the entire time. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And it, it like, and um, this is actually on a completely different channel too. And we, we'll get into that. Right. So, right. um, but yeah, as far as like, we was already playing and gigging at all of the churches that was in like the area. But mm. when it came to New Jersey, it was more of a, um, the, 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 People had their clicks, and they wanted to keep them closed. So, yeah. yeah, it was it was more like that, and only like so. For example, it's like this: Arts High School is where most of people like prevailed from from New Jersey. Mm -hmm. Me and my brothers auditioned for Arts High School, but our high school did some crazy stuff that got us not accepted. Right, like they they did some shady like trickery stuff and then that didn't happen so without that th like the favoritism was always on the side of our high school it wasn't until we did our jazz band where we really like excelled over even over them like yeah it's a youtube video that i reacted to of our first jazz performance like we were we were like in content like competing against our high school and we did so well, they forgot our high school's performance. Just and it was just four of us, and we just recycling gospel tunes, and like, <laughs> yeah. So that's what that was doing your thing. Yeah. When it comes to like the biggest, like I've always wanted to, it changed when I started YouTube. My mindset mm -hmm. on the like, so to doing drum lessons, I realized that my drum lessons was. And we can get now we're getting into the YouTube aspect on they didn't really do too well. And mm. it's because like I knew like when I was breaking down drum licks, I realized that I would break them down in the beginning. And this is why I understood now, like to if you want to make it on YouTube as a musician, you have to think like a content, you have to become a content creator, you have to become a YouTuber. Yeah. Like leave yeah, it right here. Yeah. I watch more YouTube now than Netflix and cable. Yeah, like it's, same it's, and it's a lot of it's a lot of musicians. Like I know you see this on YouTube too, where and they dope drummers, but their titles mm -hmm. is shared tracks. The name of the shared tracks. This I'm like, you know, that's good for the drummers that know who shared tracks is to click your video, but yeah. that's not gonna get everybody that watches YouTube yeah. to click it. So yeah. it, it's stuff like that. And well, where, where am I going with this? So yeah. So what blew up with YouTube is I was watching all these reaction videos of people reacting to NBA highlights, boxing, mm. all this stuff. And shout out to my sister. Um, my sister had, she was like, yo, you know, all these reactions you be watching, why don't you just react to drums? I'm like, yeah. Ain't nobody do that. Okay, yeah. And then I, I learned how to do the reactions and the green screen, all that stuff. And then yeah. I reacted to CJ Thompson. He was playing Mighty Long Way with uh that Charlotte choir. Yeah. I reacted to that. I was at... I That's was at the first video. First video. I was at right. 2,000 subscribers. I got to 2,000 subscribers from drum lessons. Right. Over 50 drum lessons. 50 yeah, yeah. let me stop you right there bro okay because i love that like people think that it happens overnight like how how hard was it and this is before you even get to the first reaction video right mm -hmm. you've done 50 lessons already online and it's there how hard was it to kind of like just keep on going, keep on creating content because for a lot of people who are in are in that space of creating content, they don't realize that like you have to plan it out. Like you have to really have like a, a forward thinking plan that works for you when it comes to creating content. You don't just wake up one day and just like, oh, I want to do this. Like I imagine that you have to really figure these things out 
And was it hard, those first 50, because you said, oh, like, some of them didn't do well and stuff like that. Was it hard to keep on going? Like, what was your motivation up until that point before you even made the first reaction video? Um, whew. I have an answer, but I'm not trying to get your podcast canceled so fast. <laughs> I have an answer. Because it wasn't even... So, okay, so... When I was doing the drum lessons, mm. keep it real. When I was doing mm. the drum lessons, looking dead at the camera, mm. it wasn't the grinding that discouraged me at the time to stop doing lessons. It mm. was the response I got back from the drummers I looked up to that had a problem yeah. with me breaking down what they played. Yeah, yeah, fair play. So let's move on from that. Yeah, 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 yeah. I understand that. No, 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 I understand so, that. Yeah, for sure. Um, not everyone's so, gonna like it when it comes, especially when it comes to content creating. Not everyone's gonna like it, not everyone's gonna like your approach on it. But these are the some of the things that people need to realize. Like, even when it comes to posting clips on Instagram or stuff like that, like sometimes I'll like I post things and I'm like. I think this is good. Why is this not like, why is people not responding mm -hmm. to it? How I want them to respond to it, you know, but like you have to just get over it really. And just, it's, it's, it then come becomes about quantity and just keep on going, keep on going, keep on going. You know? Here's the thing. Here's the thing. This is, um, that mindset. And this is what's so crazy because it's like, <clears throat> it's a little outdated now because, mm. That was what it took definitely back then. Like back then, mm -hmm. you needed to get like, <clears throat> and it's still a good mindset to have. So you you um you don't set yourself up for like disappointment if it doesn't happen the way you want it. Uh you like yeah. you should definitely come into content creating in the mindset of quantity over quality. Yeah, but like um, so for example, back then, like when I started it made sense for the algorithm for you to gain your first thousand subscribers. When you get like a hundred video uploads in, yeah. you usually will see a hundred thousand subscribers. Once you reach around a thousand videos uploaded. Right. So, but now it's more so like, like I'll give you a video. For example, you said that you like you uploaded something that you felt was just dope. And you yeah. were wondering why it didn't do so well. Well, now the algorithm is about. So, how long was your video, if you remember? Um, is is it? Are you talking about to YouTube or like to Instagram um, or something? In Instagram. Uh, to Instagram. I mean, it wouldn't have been longer than a minute at the time when I when I when I uploaded it. Okay. So, um, uh, wait. And when was this? Is this before Reels? I mean, You're right. This is before. Yeah, yeah, Reels? yeah. This, yeah, this is before Reels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And every now and and even like, I mean, that's definitely happened to me in the past. And then like, I would take it down because sometimes you just get a bit discouraged. Like, oh, maybe, maybe they didn't see it. Like, you know, mm -hmm. like, like maybe I know I, I know I did something that was killing. Like, maybe not everyone saw it. I'm take it down and save it for another day. You know, sometimes it does get discouraging when you do stuff like that. You know. Yep. And and. uh it's def it was definitely harder back then because like I remember going I remember going on uh, Instagram speci uh, specifically I remember going from and this is drum videos it's not reactions I remember yeah. going from zero to thirty thousand thousand followers on Instagram and that yeah. I that was before reels like that was yeah. and yeah. I, I I was so ignorant to reels I'm like what is this I don't I don't got time to learn this when I not knowing that it's it made it 10 times easier. Like when yeah. it comes your video, for example, if it's one minute and it's a real, literally, if you cut that video down to 30 seconds and mm -hmm. then title it something crazy, like yo, I can't believe I put this off or something like that. Yeah. Watch the difference. It's more yeah. so like I, I do see a lot of drummers like get discouraged I'm like yo I'm not getting put on or nothing like this it's literally because you're just not you're still thinking like a drummer and not yes, a content right, creator right. Yeah. like 
it like for example like I, i'm i got a video right now going viral on youtube shorts and it's it's a reaction but mm -hmm. the the original video is like maybe a thousand views my reaction video is at eighty thousand mm -hmm. in in a week and it's literally just the title i literally titled bro yeah. he broke the internet in 30 seconds who wouldn't click on that yeah 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 that, and this is where i love this bro because this is <laughs> it's it's such a it's just such a different way of of thinking about it you know and like you said a lot of a lot of the time us musicians we go into it thinking well i'm just good so surely that's enough and it's not when it comes into the social media like that's all right in the practical world where it's like you know you want to you want to gig and you want to get gigs and stuff like that. But we're in a different time now. We're in a different age and we're in an age now where um, us musicians need to start seeing ourselves as businessmen and, you know, how you run your empire. It's not just about Dexter Hercules, the drummer. It's the whole thing. Do you get check, what I'm saying? Yep. Check this out. I'm about to say something that's about to blow your mind. Yeah. That's what y'all need. So here you go. When it comes to... Here's, here's, here's something when it comes to Instagram. Once again, coming from the mindset on, like, I got so many great videos. I've been posting a ton. I'm talking to y'all mm. that's been posting a ton. Um, When I hit 30,000 followers, I was in a slump, complete mm. slump, trying to figure out, like, dude, I'm running out of ideas. I done posted over, like, I got, like, 500 posts. And, like, none of them. Here's the thing. This is a powerful quote. I'm making it up right now. Mm, go for it, bro. If your video got a million views, it ain't blow up. You can repost that and get a billion. If it got a million views, if it got two million views, ain't nobody see it. Mm. I, I went from 30 to where I'm at right now. Minus, minus, minus 20,000 followers. So I went to 30 thousand followers to a hundred thousand followers this was in a period of time where i didn't even have a place to play drums but i had all my yeah. drum videos they just didn't get seen i yeah. cut them in half changed the title and repost every time yeah. i've gotten all these new followers from reposting i ain't made no new content yeah yeah Literally, you you have the content. They just haven't seen it. The algorithm works like this. If you post something, literally, they show it to a group of people, a small group. If that group like it, they show it to more. And it's a snowball effect. If you post something and it doesn't do well, post it again. They show it to different people. Every single time you post, it goes to different people. If it didn't blow up, it just didn't reach them people. Keep yeah. going. Yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. in a huge slump right now on TikTok. Right now. I've been yeah. here before. Like, I, I've been at, when I was at 80,000. I just reposted. Like, mm. uh, let me see. Let me see. The only issue I got right now where I can't repost is because I signed with Mino. And most of my videos, I got Piesty sound. Okay. So now I have right, right. to die. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you got to make some content. But right. I feel you, though. Man, this is it, this is fascinating stuff. Right? And this is, like, guys, if you're, like, locked into this, Josh is giving game here, bro. Like, he's spitting free game. And not a lot of people want to take that on board. But this is how you really start to clock the social media game and how it works, the algorithms and how it works. This is why I wanted to get you on here, just because you understand it clearly as a business. You understand that sometimes it's not the video, it's the captions. Sometimes it's not that it's the length of the video, how long, mm -hmm. how long you're posting it for. It could be a short, it could be a real. However you want to play the game, there's ways of doing it. You just can't be lazy. You now, know? One more thing. One more Go nugget. It, One more this nugget. Is, this is great. Here's what's crazy. I just mentioned that I just signed with Mino. So I can't mm. repost my Pisces. 
What am I going to do? All the videos that I played with the Pisces symbols, I'm going to redo them with Mino. Watch yeah. what happens. It's just yeah. a cleaner repost. Yeah. I'm literally going to double my followers from doing my videos over. It's going to have a different sound, obviously, because I'm using different symbols, but it's the same content. And yeah, that's the same. Thing also. Once you once you find and that's that's the tricky part and that happens actually before you start recording you can start recording and uploading and kind of like find your way like i did a while ago but you have to like you really have to sit down and and ask yourself like what audience are you trying to like gain because when you know that once the algorithm finds that you have to mm. that's what's different though you have to like it, the algorithm is so strict now in a way i say it's strict because like this is it's going to you're going it's going to be hard to be a variety page or a variety mm. channel that's why like i can't just i tried it bro mm. i tried to add game into this channel oh yeah 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 oh, yeah, yeah. oh no. i think i saw that i think i saw that at, at one point yeah yeah and it's like the, the like because my audience is the drum reactions, so it's like they they look the algorithm looking for all of them. So if you yeah. find a niche and an audience that serves the world, like that's why finance channels blow up. Everybody looking for money, yeah. the whole world. Yeah. yeah. So it's like like really think beyond yourself when it comes to picking what you want to do, and yeah. like your, whatever your niche is. Even even Mr. Beast, like you you know Mr. Beast yeah, is. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's in a niche. It's challenges yeah. with that involve money. That's yeah. that's so clever. He's getting rich off that. That that CPM. Yeah. Is, but yeah. <laughs> so when it when it comes to like your when it comes to like the gaming stuff, do you still do it on a separate on yeah. a separate channel or is yeah, okay. I do, but it's, here's the problem. I well, I'm in the middle right now of trying to find the audience for that channel. Right. And the problem is these games suck right now. <laughs> like, right, like, right, right, right. Like, and also like, I got to find a game that I'm like amazing at. And then mm. that's when that helps too. Of course. So, I mean, yo, this is just <laughs> incredible information, man. Like I, I love this stuff, bro. Yeah. But I want to go uh, back to that that moment where like you do react to the CJ video. Yeah. So and what, what is it like? Just talk to me through that process where you're like, Oh my gosh, like I did it and it worked. I want to do it again. Like, what was that? What was that like? So I was at, I was at, I was at 2000 subscribers. I do, mm. I do the reaction. I upload it. Yeah. It hit 10 K in a day. It got me wow. from 2,000 to 3,000. I was like, oh, wait. Yeah, I ain't never seen this. This is obviously yeah, something right. I should keep doing. Yeah. yeah. And that's what, that's how it happened. Just I just kept yeah. doing that. And it just, it, it kept going and going. The an algorithm found the group. It found the cloud. Yeah. And then it just kept giving the videos out. Now, yeah. I, will, I will say this too. Another moment that hit me was when YouTube Shorts came out. Mm. And I will tell you this. If YouTube Shorts was not a thing, I would still be on my way to 150,000 subscribers instead of 300,000 subscribers. Yeah. YouTube Shorts really, like, if you, it's not, it's not good at all for money. But if mm. you want to grow your like subscriber base and grow, grow your community like crazy fast. It YouTube shorts is how you gain those subscribers. Right, YouTube right, short. Right, right. Incredible. And it's the same, it's so, same process. What was, the, what was the feeling like um, when you start uploading these videos, right? And you start two things. I want to know like what the, what the feeling was like for you. Was it like, was there a light bulb? Bold moment where you was like, I want to do this instead of wanting to be out there practically, like in the field, kind of gigging. I, I, I'd much rather make my money in this space. 
and um, and also what was what was the response to your reactions like and I mean it in a sense of like how do you think that the the community responded to you doing that because obviously like you you saw the algorithms just go quickly you saw your subscribers going up quickly what were like the comments was it all encouraging keep on going was there any negativity to it like so i guess that's like a two part a two part question really yep uh so once i uploaded okay so this how i went if you're new on youtube you're going to get emails on you just got a new subscriber you're going to get yeah. notifications when i got when i once that cj thompson one went out and it started and it started going viral i stopped getting them emails cuz they kept mm -hmm. coming in too fast yeah so that that was that was a moment um the comments were it, at at first, the comments were definitely like, "Yo, this is amazing." I I never thought there would be a drum reaction channel and stuff like that, but and then more so, it became like I was sitting at the crib with them, like, "Yo, you yeah. reacted just like I did," and like, "Yo, this is yeah, yeah, yeah." And then um, negativity came, which here now, for being on here so long, I look at negative comments different now too. Because mm. now, now when I wake up and see a negative comment, I immediately go to the video. Oh, okay, that's why you're mad because it's going viral. Every right, right. negative comment was just a notification that I blew that one of my videos is doing good. Yeah, they, it's yeah, like yeah, it yeah. happens immediately. The second they get to a higher number, you get them. All the negative yeah. comments come out. Yeah. I'm, getting, I'm getting them now. Yeah. On, a, on a YouTube short. Yeah. How did you deal? How did you deal with that? Because that's a it's a different type of energy. I mean, it's like it's never great getting negative comments, but it sounds like you kind of took it and it's just like, well, right, cool. That means I'm doing some. If there's a negative comment, they've taken the time to comment, which means they've taken the time to watch the video, which is another mm -hmm. view. So yeah. is that is that is that kind of how you were seeing it? Uh, that's one way. Also, uh, the fact that they they're just letting me know that the video is doing well, and then uh, I was talking, I was doing a podcast at Sweetwater with uh, drummer uh, Daniel Bernard. Shout out to Daniel Bernard. Cool. He 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 came up with a quote. He said, "I mean, let me try. I'm not. I'm trying not to misquote him." He said, um, "Social media has given little men." an opportunity to have no hold on no i don't want to miss call this this was too good mm -hmm. um social media has given small men i don't know if he said big big words or big mouths yeah, i think it was big it, words though. it was big words but yeah like these these people like they <laughs> It's and most of the time, also, I've understood that they're the majority of them are trolling kids. Yeah. <laughs> like that's another that's another thing because I've had my yeah. share of going and then I'll be like, "Wait, he ain't responding," and then he respond like, "Dude, I'm 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 like ten when I was just playing," yeah. and then that's even yeah. worse. Like that's why yeah. I'm like, uh, you can't even like just have your fun, and it's at this point where they just. My subscribers, you know, they 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 got my back. A lot of them got yeah. my back because they they arguing with the haters, yeah, and it, yeah, yeah, it, yeah, it yeah. helps with the engagement. They're riding out, man. They're riding out. Yeah, right now. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. I love that, bro. And then, like, did you get to a point? I mean, like, I've seen you respond to uh, do a reaction on one of my videos, and now I have the mm -hmm. pleasure of actually talking to you and getting to know you which is great did you start like getting to know these these drummers like what what was the response like from them um a lot of them it was a lot of uh positive responses actually all, all of them some of them switched up on me some yeah. of them did especially this one in particular god yeah. god bless you bro 
But um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so uh, it, yeah, T- two of them, two of them. One of them still got me blocked. I'm a big fan, bro. I don't know why you blocking me. <laughs> why <Yeah>. you block? <laughs> That, that one's off a of, off a of drum lesson. Like I, it, it happens, man. a fan, bro. But yeah, um, yeah, it's they they it's positive all the way around. Um, but that you still that you 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 have it's, it's still it's it's a select few that they they, yeah. they out there they know who they are. <laughs> yeah. But for the most part, everybody that I react to, they they love it because they understand that like I. At this point, with with the platform I have, it's just so much exposure just being pushed your way, and exactly a lot of them, a lot of my subscribers, and I, I'm really specific when it comes to that. On like, of course, if a video of Lana Lewis or something goes out and and it, someone like that and it's going crazy, of course, my subscribers want me to check that out. But I really yeah. like try to look for people that they might not have heard of because that's yeah. what that's what adds more value to my channel because that's getting- what i just to jump on there pause i think it takes oh my god <laughs> it's all good bro <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> just to add to what you're saying <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> i think that is one of the best things about your channel is that like you're putting people on to people who like some of us may not have heard of, you know, or like there's certain clips that I saw it on your page before I saw the original clip. Mm -hmm. So I don't even mind. And because your response, it's just real. Like it's, it's a response that I would like, like, what was that? I mean, I need to rewind it now. Do you know what I mean? Like I see sometimes you'd be watching a clip, and it'd be like 10 seconds in, you'd be like, hold on. I need to I get, yeah. I need, <laughs> I need to reload it right now. Like, but let's be honest, we all respond like that. If it's a killing video, that's how we all are. So there's a realness to it. Mm-hmm. But I think there's something that's even more kind of sincere when it is a drama that you know we might we might not have heard of, or it's a clip that sometimes it's just like. I want to see if he reacted in the way that I reacted. So I'm not weird. Like yep. it's, it, it is a normal response to, to be like that, you know? And then, like you said as well, you've got the platform to also elevate people's videos that might not have done well in the original video, but your reaction video is getting twice, three times the numbers that the original video was got. So I can't really see why people would, would hate on it. I can. I look at it and I see it from the kind of pureness of it, and I think it's. I think it's great. Um, talk to me about that thing behind you. The, the... <laughs> and what was, and what was that like? Because that's that's dope, bro. And I think that's like testament to, to the hard work that you put in, you know. And again, this is called the Practice Makes podcast. I don't like to say Practice Makes Perfect. Practice makes whatever you want it to be, but mm-hmm. it is all about putting in those hours, you know, putting in the, those, like they say, 10,000 hours to master a craft. But it takes a lot of videos. It takes a lot of, you know, videos that did great, videos that didn't do great, great days, not so great days. What was it like when you started to get acknowledged, you know, publicly for the work that you've done and also kind of, like financially, like what was it like when you're like, oh snap, like I'm making money from this. What what are those moments like? Um, bro, it was it was definitely like a huge moment to yeah. um and it, but leading up to it, like there there was definitely a, a test because like so when I hit seventy eight thousand subscribers i got an email from a brand that was trying to uh they wanted me to review some video editing thing Mm -hmm. and they they sent it to me i clicked on it next thing you know i'm logged out of my youtube uh, account oh man logged out logged out and uh they changed my channel to spacex 
<clears throat> and they were holding a live stream where they were like uh, access for donations and stuff. And uh, pe- they were scamming people out of their money. I was getting emails from subscribers uh, like, yo, I can't believe that you're stealing money from me. Like that. All in a matter of oh, day, a day. And what's crazy is now this is where the Instagram fam was. They, they just, I uh, I put out a post. I was like, yo, uh, my channel just got hacked. Boy, you would have thought I said I died. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then everybody was sharing my post this uh, before Reels. They're sharing my posts on their stories, tagging YouTube. And uh, because, and this is this is definitely, because I always, and this what, this goes back to the mindset of being, being a content creator, then drummer. Because yeah. I could have easily, like, like when it comes to drummers, like being like, "Yo, I, they, they, I'm just they, the algorithm hates me. They, they, they just showcasing all of these other people over me, and, and I got good drum videos and stuff." I'm, I'm always like, I'm subscribed to the, I think it's like six people that are like exclusive to tell you updates on YouTube and what changes new features all right. of this and i hit him i hit one of them up immediately he was like oh d- tweet at youtube they're not going to respond to none of that stuff on instagram so i yeah. tweeted youtube my channel got hacked this that immediately dm all right yo send me send me all this information and stuff like that so they they got my channel back within a week um so it happened again though. Channel got hacked mm. twice. But the, the second time I'm like, I already know what to do. Literally, just tweet to YouTube. If you guys are dealing with that stuff, tweet YouTube, show them, yeah. get them your information. They have that, they fixed that immediately. Um, but yeah, so once I got the channel back, this is where quantity kicked in. It doesn't work like this now. I've tried it. It it doesn't work the same. But I, just like you're doing with your podcast, I reacted to 20 videos in a day. Yeah. And the next day I edited them and uploaded them. And then that following day I uploaded them. I uploaded two videos a day. I couldn't get through the first week. Without going viral, it was the Larna yeah. Lewis on Drumio. Larna yeah, Lewis hears yeah. the song once, and plays it, <clears throat> and that video within that week got me to 100k. Yeah, like I couldn't even have time to process my channel being hacked. Like it happened yeah. in the same week. So yeah. like that's hard work though, guys, man. And again, like yo, yo, it's not easy. You you got to push through. You got to push through. You got to have that drive, man. I love that. Yep. And then that's when, you know, I, I hit YouTube up. They had to verify that check. I'm like, you know, put Josh drum class on it. Do what you got to yeah. do. And then just, yep. And yeah. Then, yeah. And then what was the moment like, and I guess I'm starting to wrap it up here soon, but like the moment where, especially when you started like making money from it as well, like was that, I guess when you initially started to make money from YouTube, was that when you was like, all right, cool, I'm doing this. This is this is going to be my job. I'm going to be a content creator. Um, it was definitely like it definitely was the the when I went viral with the Larna Lewis, and it's also yeah. because of the fact that I didn't understand at the time. <laughs> I had to do more research from them those YouTube channels, but mm-hmm. um, and it's it's different now. So um, but because. It AdSense is very right now is very unreliable. Like it's not consistent when it comes mm-hmm. to that. So that, that's why, like, um, I do stuff now, like so, doing the chorus, um, a few other things. But uh, at that time, the uh, like w- when it comes to a video, back then your video had to be over ten minutes. For you to put multiple ads in the video 
And that doesn't Absolutely. mean that YouTube will show all of the ads, but that will raise the CPM and the RPM on that video. Yeah. So when I saw that the Lana Lewis was going viral, I'm like, oh no, wait, how many ads I got? I only got one ad. Uh-uh. Every minute. I <laughs> put an ad. Yeah. Every <laughs> yeah, minute. Yeah. And I just I just saw like every day it was just up a thousand, a thousand. I'm yeah. like, what the but yeah, it's stuff like that. So like it's a little different now, but you just gotta like once again, like you do the research first. So like YouTube, there's tons of free YouTube videos on yeah, them telling you so much free game, yeah. They're telling you what YouTube channels make the most money when it comes to ad revenue. What what mm -hmm. uh, niches ha do the most, and like just if it's your passion and stuff, go there. You watch what happens. Yeah, uh, yeah. And you know, like lastly, I kind of want to get on to on to now, but I'm seeing like from what I see, especially on on Instagram, like the content is starting to change. Like it's getting funny. Like you posted something from um from from. <laughs> from Drumline the other day, it was kind of me cracking up. And I was just like, it, I can see, like I find the humor in it, but I also see like the business side in it as, as well. And I'm seeing like there's, you know, that you're starting to kind of shift like your content and you got the stuff with your, with your brothers in it as, as well. And I see that your brothers are making content as well, if I'm right. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, the, 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 yeah, yeah. Yeah, so like, what what's what's that like for you now and like kind of going forward yeah let me let me go here real quick there's another testimony my uh the middle one jason um mm. he was about to quit instagram at really? 30 or, or, he had 33,000 followers he was like yo instagram ain't feeling me man i'm i'm like he was saying the same thing yeah, and then, yeah. then i had uh this is when I was going viral on TikTok while I was doing trigger videos where I would play a popular beat but not finish it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I was like, I told my brother, I was like, yo, you should, you should do these trigger videos. And he did how to trigger church folk. Yeah. And immediately it, it only take one video. You yeah. it found his audience, which found you know who Kev on stage is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he found that video. And then he reposted Jason on his Instagram. That video yeah. went everywhere. He yeah, went from yeah, yeah. 30K to 90K in two days. He yeah. passed me on Instagram. He is the Instagram king in this family. <laughs> like, yeah, 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 yeah. He's really running it. Going from he posted a video. I don't know if he posted it recently or the other. I don't know yet, but I saw this video and he, um, it was like, trying to get your your crush in church and you start playing lovers and friends yep bro i was yep. cracking up bro like, I was, I was like, you know that stuff was funny but like it's good and i can you know i can see how how i was how it's working out for you guys um what's next um man i i really want to i gotta work on it though i gotta work on the like a whole new storyline but i want to i want to do the like a, a continuation to the guest drummer skits that I did back then, mm -hmm. back in a while. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm definitely let's see, I definitely we gonna keep doing the voiceovers though. <laughs> That's that gotta keep, please, going. yeah, bro. bro. That stuff's funny, going. bro. I can't even lie. Um, I definitely want to like, I really want to like, uh continue with the my drum course like get that going i'm definitely trying i really am trying to do clinics like i want to start doing drum clinics um i'm working on one that i'm i might have to postpone because it's uh the like the timing is kind of off with it yeah and um but yeah i definitely want to like explore doing drum clinics yeah. Before, like, I, I get into, like, I, I, I used to want to play for, like, major artists and stuff. Um, but, like, it's, like, when, when COVID happened, like, it, 
something hit me because like I saw a lot of musicians like they couldn't gig anymore and yeah. they were like but I'm like that like that that was the perfect and it still is the perfect time to like start your channel blow up your own page because like for example like just how many how many people are you performing with on your tour like an estimate with like in the band you mean I'm not like the audience that that you're playing in front oh. of. Oh, <clears throat> oh my gosh, man! Uh, sixty, seventy thousand a night or something like that. Or something. So you can save like just to save my channel. It's at like two hundred and two hundred and I think thirty thousand subscribers, bro. You literally got you you build you built this up. You say you're not gigging for like weeks and stuff. Like, bro, you have the audience right there. Exactly. Yeah. 100%. Like, literally, can you can perform to them every day? Yeah. Yeah. yeah and yeah, literally yeah. get paid from that. Get paid from sponsors. Get get paid. Like, bro, I I don't I don't heard people say like it's sponsors out there that are paying ten thousand dollars for a five second shout out. Yeah. Five seconds, yeah. but like that, that that's what's going on. Like with this YouTube, this there there are people like I don't. I'm glad I'm not a parent, bro. Oh, I'm glad I'm not a parent. <laughs> it's hard work, bro. <laughs> bro, these these kids are seeing 13 year old millionaires on yeah, they on YouTube. I can't like stay in school, y'all. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah <I'm, I'm>, oh. <laughs> for real. But yeah, like that's that's what that's where we live. Like even for example, for for you, is there a way when you're touring to like either have someone film you vertically or have your your iPhone set up by like over the shoulder by you? Yeah, I'm. Um, I've got like, bro, I've got like a whole bunch of content from like all of these shows every day. Like I'll, I'll film something and I'm keeping it with me and I'm trying to you know, get more on it with the with the content thing from the shows specifically. Like that's something that I've tried to make a thing of a lot more on on this gig. Now I'm like I'm blessed to be able to play with an artist like Ed Sheeran where I've got a big platform to be able to present this stuff. And it was stuff that I wasn't even necessarily um on doing before. But my mindset had to change when it came to just creating content and seeing myself as a brand. You know what I mean, mm -hmm. bro? And being able to push out like videos and and all of that kind of thing. So it's stuff that I'm definitely working on as well, bro. If you literally just have those and make them into clips, thirteen seconds, thirty seconds, and you got Ed Sheeran's name in the title. Yeah, this is what it's like to perform for Ed Sheeran. This, like, Ed Sheeran wanted me to do this chop right here at this second, bro. Yeah, bro, bro. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I've watched literally when YouTube Shorts dropped. The YouTube uh, YouTuber, his name is Josh. Forgot his last name. You probably seen him on Instagram. He does sound effects to movies on the drums. All oh, right, yeah, I know that. Yeah, 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 bro. He was at 70,000 subscribers. YouTube Shorts dropped. He re-uploaded his Instagram videos to YouTube Shorts. Mm -hmm. He hit a million subscribers in three months. That's insane. He's at four million now. Bro. <laughs> and That's videos insane. he's already had. Yeah. That is and now his thing. That's another thing. I know it's a little tricky. To like get the work for us drummers to get the world other than drummers to check out your videos that are like real short where you you probably yeah. just doing a chop or something. That's why you got to be like the, the 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 tricky thing is coming up with them titles and they not too yeah, they long. Can, yeah, that's that's right. Yeah, yeah. But bro, you you got an edge. Ed yeah. Sharon, blah 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 blah. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> like, bro. That's For man. Real. That's For it. Real. And and you, bro. Yep. Yeah, go on. Uh you 
uh, YouTube just like they did this thing where let me see. I'm pretty sure my phone will focus. If we go to YouTube short, any of them, they don't matter. Um, we go YouTube shorts right here. So right here, this is new. They can click right here and it'll take you to any of your long, long form content. Right, right, right. So you mess around and get 2 million views on the short. 2 million people got the potential to check out your long form content, give you more money from that one. Yeah. yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Bro, I just want to like, this has been super inspirational. Um, just learning about, you know, the way that you've kind of just been successful and continuing to be successful, bro, is, is really, really inspirational. Um, and again, like I like to give people people their flowers, man. Like I, I appreciate what you do. Please keep on going, you know, even when you have hard days or whatnot, just keep on going, man, because there's people I'm all the way from London. I'm from South London, bro. And man. I'm able to I'm able to connect with you and chat to you and i mean currently i'm in malaysia and we're able to have a conversation you know josh if you hit him up he will respond to your dm like he's a normal guy do you know yeah. what i mean and he's just found his he's found his niche and, and he's running with it and you know for a lot of those musicians this is just like another way of getting in the industry you know like learn learn the game like learn youtube understand it as well you know it, it doesn't always have to be done the traditional way you know this is 2024 now you know like there's so many different ways of getting in and getting into the industry being able to make money being able to connect with different people worldwide you know so that's why i wanted to get you on here just because it, it's just a, a a different avenue to maybe like the way that i the, the way that i approach things or the way that other people approach things so there's space for everybody you know and as long as you're a cool person it's been great getting to this is like the longest that we've spoken apart from you yeah. know on, on on dms but i feel like you're my guy already do you know what i mean like pause but i feel like I, I, no, I, that, I, was, I, that was fine that was fine that was all right all right cool yeah. i'm double checking you pulls me twice now <laughs> but you know like i said it is this is a good way of of connecting with people um josh is an approachable guy just hit him up you know, and yep. anything that you want to learn. He's dropped a lot of free game here, a lot of knowledge, some super important stuff. So, bro, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on this podcast. I appreciate you, brother, for real. Man, it's been a pleasure being on here, man. This, this is I really appreciate oh. it. Just keep, keep <laughs> on going, keep on going, man. Keep on going. Every now and then it's 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 nice to look back on this on the journey because you mm -hmm. might not you might not always do that, you know, like where you look back and see how far that you've come, but there's people out there that have been watching and following the journey and they might not always say it, but there's people out there that really appreciate what you do, you know? So mm -hmm. like, keep it up for real, bro. Yeah, Thank man. you so much. Yeah, man. Thank you, man, for having me on here, man. Yeah, man. It's yeah. an exclusive. Yes, appreciate you, brother. <laughs> and until the next time, guys, thank you for tuning in again to the Practice Mates podcast. We appreciate all of you guys. Love and blessings.